There he is. There he is. Hello. Hello. He's live. Yeah. The human version. I'm like, yeah, the human version of that, <laughs> that avatar. So I'm not not nervous. So let me let me get my mindset so I'm not nervous. Let's let's have some fun. Exactly. It's gonna be yeah. fine. Yeah. All right, take it away. So, let me just start by sharing the screen as everyone did. Looks good. So, I can, can you see my screen? I can see it. Okay, so let's begin. So this talk, it's about the top 10 Tailwind tricks. So I did practice that title, so I got it better this time. So let's moving on. So I'm Kaneko and that's the Kaneko face. So that's that 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 happened that happens. Uh, and I'm a full stack developer at Medicare Portugal. And at least it's not Ninja. Uh, and uh, you might have seen it. I'm the full Laracon developer, an official title. So, but I can name it. Maybe I need to talk to Ian after this one. So fun fact, I like Vegemite and Durian fruit. Yeah, Vegemite, thanks to Tim McDonnell. And you might have seen it, so I draw some logos. And with some, I mean quite a bunch around the Laravel community and PHP community. And raise your hands if did you ever extend the tailwind default? Oh, right. I keep on forgetting that these online events, I don't have anyone here. So let's moving on. So was I asking, are you still using a CDN link for using Tailwind? So you're just using that ugly link that carries as everything from Tailwind? Or are you still setting up every single thing on your on your project, so we need to install the Tailwind CSS, the Post CSS, the other prefix, and whatever. So, are you still in doing that? So, there's one thing. Shoot, my back screen is falling apart. I'm good. Carry on. So, there's one thing that you can install. <laughs> my back screen. Shoot, Ian, help me. Um, You're on your own. Yeah, I'm, 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 no worry. So you can actually, uh, from the Tailwind Labs, uh, they release a Tailwind CSS CLI tool that you can install it and use it globally. And you just type npm install globally in Tailwind CSS. And after some time, you eventually have installed in your on your laptop the, the CLI tool and you just work it works like just like this. So this is the time to shut up and show me the code. So here is um, just an example and I might just carry on. I don't know if I should just remove this. So in here, let's practice a bit with the tail, uh, tail and tool. So I'm just going to grab my terminal and I'm just going to, uh, I actually, Made the uh, an alias for that comment, so it's a lot faster for me to type Tailwind CSS CLI. So I just need to, if you type Tailwind CSS and output, you just need to select your file that you want to uh, export all the Tailwind classes. And as you can see in this folder, I only have an HTML file. I don't have any anything else. So with that, I just have lock and ready a Tailwind CSS file with all my classes, as you see here. And as the same, you can also purge the file according to your index file. So purging will scrap the entire, the entire HTML file, sees what classes that you 
are really using and cleans out everything else. So I'm just going to do that. It takes quite some time because purging, you know, with this approach, imagine you have, you export the entire CSS, then you read the HTML and then you just grab everything that you need. But you might be already know it, but there's a way to do the, up, the, the inverse. So you just initially, you just see what your HTML has and pushes that classes that you actually need. So what this does, it's a lot, a lot faster because it doesn't do the opposite thing. And the CLI tool as well as a watcher, that's truly helpful. So we just type that comment with the flag of watch and you, any time that you just change something, it just rebuilds uh, again the CSS file in lock and read. And imagine that you have, you want to, a CSS file for production because if you open here, the CSS, it's ugly because it's not all minified. So for that, even the CLI tool has an option to, instead of watching, I want to minify. So, and with that, my CSS file is a lot smaller. So this way you can just start a random page, add, C add C uh, some Tailwind classes in there and just push it uh, on production. So moving on for the next tip. So in here, sorry. So the next trick it's regarding the config file. So in the config file, to have the config file ready, it's not this one, it's this one. You just need to, back to the folder, you just need to use the init uh, comment in there. And that will generate um, a basic config file with all the, the setups that you eventually need for your tailwind uh, CSS file. And I don't know if you know it, but you can actually just use the flag full. And for example, tailwind CSS, tailwind full uh, config, yes. Just type another name because it might not replace the file. And in this, with the flag full, you can actually see all the, the default values of your configuration. And you can actually de, uh, dig in a little bit and see which one values that there is and actually know what 44 means in Tailwind. So that might help give you some help in the future. So, but I don't know if you know it, uh, Tailwind as some functions in, inside of it that you can use it on your configuration configuration file. For example, there's an option for colors. So you can require on the Tailwind CSS file, colors. And this one, as it's expected, it has all the colors from Tailwind. And what that means, for example, in this text here, it has the text red, so let's just change that just because of reasons. So color, and let's just say that red, um, or let's add another color. So orange, or I don't know how to type orange and just let us type a color that it's not orange. So if I just do this and eventually it works and it's not working and I'm stressing out, no worry. So what I wanted to show you is that for the colors, imagine that you are setting up your shades of your red on Tailwind, right? So in here, you can add the colors red and call it the 400. In here, you call it the 600, for example. In here, the 800, right? And eventually, let me just check one thing. Yeah, that worked. And yeah, at least this works. But did you know that there's a, a special key that you can use on your Tailwind config file that it's the default one? And with that, the 600, 
yeah, the 600 will disappear. And you can actually just type it as red. <laughs> this is not working. I might using the red and not, it doesn't like me. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Refresh. It just revealed here my watchers. Let's go back. Eventually, yeah. I got it. Work. So, as what I want to show you is if you, you can specify this default key just to remove that part. And this is actually one of the things that happen when you just type border. It, it's by default the one value, but since it's the default, you don't need to specify it as border minus one. So, that's the trick for the config file. Moving on. The third tip, it's around plugins. So one plugin that I absolutely install in every project is this guy, require. You just need to install uh, as it calls, just need to type npm install this uh, Tailwind debug screens. And this guy, what it does, you just need to require it and it's on your Tailwind by now and you just need to type on your body class a default uh not default where was the debug screens sorry debug screens and with that it injects a little bit of html on your site as you can see here that it shows the actual breakpoint that is displayed at the moment so if i just resize my window you can see that it changed the it shows the act the current uh breakpoint that the page has and this is a lot helpful when you're trying to change the the text size or whatever or the color on that particular breakpoint it's a helpful on that so another uh plugin that i also wanted to show you there's a couple of them the th first party plugins from the actual tailwind labs and one of them that is truly helpful it's the typography typography plugin and imagine not the config file this one imagine that you have you are creating a page for a blog post and are you still using the manually the selecting the class for tailing to uh, making the, the header class a little bit uh, larger and bolder and manufacturing the lineate for the, the post itself. So you can just remove that, all of those, that stuff. Where is that thing? Even the text links. And with that plugin, you actually just need a class Call it pros, hopefully. Yeah. And this is a little bit opinionated from the Tailwind Labs, but it actually pushes already your a set of classes for your blog post or for your page. And you can also uh, trim a little bit and change on the configuration in there. The, the last one uh, plugin that I want to sh show you from the, the Tailwind Labs is the forms. Imagine that you have here a form. Oh, and I show it too quick. This is the default version. So as you can see, the input fields are all white. Uh, my checkbox, it's the default one from the, the browser. But if I just put in there the, the plugin, the required uh, the forms plugin, it instantly changed all my styling according to the default version of the, the plugin. And it's all as the, the focus color on the border on the input field. And as you can see, it has the, a, a fine checkbox in there. So that could help you just getting right away a uh, form uh, for your pages. And the very last plugin that I want to show you, uh, it's for your navigation links. You might happen in the past to so you are creating a SaaS application you have navigation links in there and if you use it react or view it 
the view router injects, for example, on view, in, injects a, a router active link on the specific link that it's on the page. So there, I've seen it on Twitter from Kai and that this one was a great idea. And I might be using this every single time. So I'm just going to show you. So imagine that you have here your links and you just wanted to change the color of the first one if it's the active page. So imagine that with this plugin, that's a, a manual one, it's not a, just a, a few set of lines. You can actually say current and text red, for example, and current even BG red, that's it. And you just need to add, imagine that your view router just injects this, uh, this class on the link, link active, and that's it. And you have here the option to say like using a prefix, a well-known way of prefixing on tailing and just type the utility classes in there. And with those that combined with the link active, it just styles your links. So this one is a lot helpful and thanks Kai for sharing that idea. So moving on and cranking these tips. So next tip, it's around custom fonts. It might happen for you in the past. So you want to add a custom font for your site, I guess. So, but you eventually grab that font, the font family from Google and you just throw it on HTML, uh, on a selector element or even a class or even whatever. But don't forget that you, you are actually using Tailwind. So make use of the Tailwind family and environment in development. So with that idea, you can actually just grab the font family value, just remove that and go to your configuration, uh, Tailwind configuration, and there's a way to extend the font families on the Tailwind. So with that, I'm just going to add here my new font, the Zico. And with ju just that line, I can instantly just say that I have here a font Z pool. And this allows me to what? To just have another, uh, another element and say, well, oh, something, I don't know, I'm just cranking out something. And I can reuse that using that utility classes, using that font family that I just pushed it from Google. And that's it for the, the fonts. Let me just check my notes. Yeah, that's it. So moving on. Trick number five. So EDA extensions. These are some EDA extensions that you must install on your the best EDA whatsoever. That's VS Code. Sorry, Christoph. Sorry, Frank. Um, so for the EDA extensions, it's not this line, it's this line that I want to remove it. The first one that you absolutely need to change is the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. And you might seen it already while I was on the other tips. It just, you just start typing. You need to remember every single class on Tailwind. You just start typing text iPhone, and you can see right away the amount of options that Tailwind has according to your setup, current setup. So you can see here you have all, your, all of your reds and imagine that you want a font bold and even IntelliSense does one funny thing. Imagine that you add twice the, the class. IntelliSense reminds you or alerts you that you have some duplication there and then you can remove it. And you can have it here a line eight uh, leading actually and being relaxed because I need to be a little bit more relaxed. And maybe that's that's enough. The next EDA extension that you need to install is call it Edwin. And you might happen in the past that you don't know actually which order you should use on your Tailwind class because it can be a little bit 
long and you need to should i put the big colors on in the beginning or in the end or whatsoever so headwind does that uh sorting for your for you so you just need to save it you can uh, setting up uh, this up on your configuration and just save it and then Edwin just sorts everything according to an opinionated version of it. You can actually tweak it if you have some preferences. And it also removes any duplication in there. So that this plugin, uh, this extension combined with IntelliSense, it's uh, your, um, you'll be like MacGyver. The last extension that you need to install it called, if you, having some troubles with colors and you want to add your uh, primary color in your Tailwind config file, it's you need to install this one. So Tailwind Shades. And with, in this one, this ring, I got here some trouble. Yeah, good one. So you just go to a config, imagine it, you have in there a color, right? So you just add, Call, calls the, um, the extension, Tailwind Chase, and it grabs the main color that normally is the 500 and just adds the tints and the shades of the colors and even grabs the similar name color from that color. And you can instantly, oof, that was weird. Let me just go back. And you instantly have your set of uh, options for colors based on a primary color. So this one is a really good one to install. Moving on. Getting some time for Ian. So next trick beyond the, the actual EDA. So in this one, I want to show you uh, a, couple, a couple of uh, um, desktop apps that you need to install it if you have the possibility. Well, the first one, it's called Tint from Beyond Code. So, oof, I forgot to tint. forgot to run it. So you, with the hotkey, you just call the uh, normal color picker that you eventually have. But the difference here is that instead of grabbing the hexadecimal, it grabs the, the actual Tailwind color in there. So it's crazy how similar, how precise it is. So imagine, I'm just going to change here for red 800, and I'm just going to call it the tint, and it's red, right? It runs, and if you click it, so I click it twice, so just, and grabs right away the text in there. So it's, it's freaking awesome. And, the other app that I want to show you is in here. So it's called Windy. Where's my mouse? It's my mouse. So it's a, actually is a Chrome extension that you need to install it. And you might see it. I believe so. So it, it, you just, while calling the extension, it gets an overlay that you can see and if recognize all the tailing classes in there. And if you copy it, click it, it copy it. And if you paste it, it's an exact clone. So this feels a little bit like magic. Thanks, Marcel, for this one. Thanks a lot. And a little bit of advertising, free advertising for Marcel. So I don't know if you know it, but actually Tint is for free during the Laracon, so go get it. And everything else, it's on 25% discount. So moving on to the next tip. Well, this one, this tip trick I want to show you is the just-in-time, but not actually the just-in-time itself, how it works or whatever, just a mindset. You might be familiar if you think it Tailwind, in the past before just in time you have like a one-to-one -one pair you have a class and you have a result in css a property value and even if you have like over this this thing in a pass and actually hopefully it works it's it was the same thing so you have a one-to-one -one. you have a you have a, a class 
for a CSS property value. But actually with JIT, you need to start thinking like not a one-to-one, -one, but actually you can overlap some conditions. So for example, in here, actually I'm going to show it on MD. So this one is as M breakpoint. And if I grow this one, uh, as you can see, it works because it's the two of them combined. So just a mindset that I want to, sh to start thinking on using JIT is instead of having a one-to-one, -one, this is pretty much feels like if MD and over. So this is just may, might be a funny trick for you to think about it and might help you how to use more of the JIT power. So I will let you think, we have this idea to think about it. But the main trick that I want to share with you and I use this quite a lot, even on the Laracon online site, is using that weird thing that Adam present, presented us or with JIT, that's the custom property values. And I use this quite a lot on uh, the Laracon site because I want it for the Eero or the Eero image with all the illustration made from Flick to have a precise size depending on each breakpoint. So I could, uh, with that, uh, for the mobile version, I just want it to be full size. And on the, the breakpoint of medium, I just want it to be having a, a precise 300 pixels of width. So with that, imagine if you reach the mobile site, then it's the full width, but then you can be a little bit more precise on your image. And since it's an image, it constrains the proportions. So this one is a, a good trick that I always, uh, since it, it it showed up, I started using everywhere because sometimes you need to be precise on some breakpoints. So that uh, property values in there, it's, it's lifesaver sometimes. Moving on, the next one, it's a little bit tricky. It takes uh, quite some time. So let's go full throttle. So the next trick that I want to share you with you, it's a dark mode. You might not use it whatsoever, uh, but you might want to start using it because dark, it's fun. Uh, so imagine this example, you have here like a, the body, normal body, and as a default, I am using the text black and BG gray um, on the background. So the dark mode on, on your configuration file, it has three values. So you can accept a false that you just remove any dark uh, properties in there, or you can just switch for media. And this this one, will the CSS will see uh, your lacking the word the preferences of your uh, device to see if you want the light or the dark version so since i'm using the dark version on uh, on my desktop eventually oh yeah i forgot to so uh you actually need to add the dark properties or tailwind properties in there so imagine for dark i want to a bg gray of 900 and the text as white and i just added two classes a gray. And as I'm using the media value on my dark mode, the and I'm using the, the dark version on my MacBook, so it easily changed for the dark version. But you might want it to change as a class. So the user will choose and pick if they want to see the dark version or not. And using that option, you actually need to add in some parent, the dark flag, uh, the dark class, and instantly change everything. But it wouldn't be cool to have like a button in there. So I'm just going to try to live code a quick button. So imagine that this is a light version, right? And I want to change for the dark one. So I'm just going to add the dark there. And why not using Alpine? So I'm just going to add here a data and I'm just going to call it 
in HTML. And I'm going to grab the document, document, document element. So the, this is actually vanilla JavaScript. So I'm just grabbing the, the main document, the HTML element of my page. And when I click, I just want to the add a class list, class list, add. And I just want to add dark. So hopefully, fingers crossed, if I click here, it just toggles for the dark version. But I don't want to see anymore that that button. So it's, you can might say, oh, you can use a flag and just change on JavaScript. But my, don't forget that you're using Tailwind. So why not just add in there if it's on dark? Just hide the thing. Hidden. So I just try it once again. So if I click it, just remove it because I'm on dark mode. So if I want for the dark mode, just do the opposite. So instead of R adding, I just want to remove. And in this case, it's even by default. And on dark, I want to see it. So oof, yeah, close it. It's the eight trick. Yeah. So if I click it, I change it to dark. And if I click it, it changes it to light. So you have in here with a couple of lines, uh, a way to change the dark mode of your site. And if I remember correctly, a uh, persist uh, plugin on Alpine just got released. So why not just add in here a dark flag and persist. And by default, I want to be as false. And when I actually just click the dark, I want to the dark flag to be true. Welcome to the dark side. And I, on the opposite side, I just want it to be false. So I'm just clicking and it works, still works, but it actually doesn't save my the, diff, the setup that I choose. So for that, I just need to add an X in it. And in here, you can just throw JavaScript in there. So imagine I can just add here a class list. And I might, there probably have a, a nice ways to do this, but I'm just going to with this approach. So if dark, it's on, I want to add. And unless I want to remove. And I want to add or remove the class. So if I just refresh it, the persist um, thing on Alpine just knows it that I want a dark version and just shows it. And if I, I can still switch it and I just can refresh it and it remembers my option, my saved option. Oh, that one was fun. So moving on. Next trick, applying. So you might wondering, you might done this on the past. So you have a lot of CSS uh, properties in there and you just wanted to migrate them for on tailing. So normally, and I can just tra translate them right away. So I just can call it the class and I'm using this play flex. So that's flex, justify center, align uh, item center. Yeah, that's the one. So text black, background, uh, big A, gray, 200, whatever. Line leading normal, for example, and a border radius. Yeah, because we need them around it. Yeah, what more? Uh, padding as well, and more padding. And what I'm trying to show you, eventually you have <laughs> this enormous line in your HTML. And since it's a button, you might say, oh, just push it on your CSS uh, of Tailwind. And just add in there like a button here and just apply the full thing. So on my on your HTML, and this is the one, just either remove the class or add class in there button, right? So that might be good, but you are still having the same issue. You have a bloating line and you need to 
horizontal scroll everything. So the trick here that I want to sh share with you is instead of putting everything on the same line, why not just give a couple of them? So, and in here, I actually like to group them by type more or less. So imagine that you, instead you just apply flex, justify center and items center. So in here, I have my apply or from tailwind just for the display and the, the alignment of the content. And then I could actually have one just for the text font bold and with the line uh, leading normal. So I have an apply line just for the formatting of the, the, the text. And then I eventually have one for the padding. So in this will feels a little similar for CSS, but it's using actually the utility classes for from Tilly. So that's one thing that I usually do on my CSS files for the components uh, using the apply directive. And don't forget one thing. This is a special tip. So don't forget that if you set up any CSS in here, right before the utilities, in the future, you can't, you might not be, cannot might be used the, the utility classes from Tailwind. For that, you just make sure that you always have the Tailwind utilities on the bottom or else just have like the layer components in there just to make sure that the, all your extra CSS it's between these two guys. So you can add some, a little bit of salt on any button or any component. So last trick. And this one, I don't want to shame Tailwind because it's an amazing tool, but there's a couple of whoopsies in, uh, currently on Tailwind that it might beat you somewhere in some projects. And the first one is regarding the leading so imagine that you have here a text normal and you want to be loose so eventually yeah as you can see my line height of the text is now bigger and but imagine that you the text size it's now 3xl but for the um, sm you want to be like 5xl so if i just refresh it and as you can see, there's something weird happening. So I just lost my entire leading. And that happens because by default in the most recent versions of Tailwind, it has the, the line eight, it, uh, it's responsive. So in depending on the responsive text size, it has actually has some line eight associated. And this could be, you can end up with, these particular cases and one way of quick solving it like any good old css you just make it anything important and just carry away i don't care so you can actually use the jit new property of adding an exclamation point uh, right before any tailwind class and it easily adds the important uh, exclamation on your css so you just fix it or I found out a way to solve this problem. So it just, you can grab from the full configuration of Tailwind or the default setup uh, from the default team. So you can see here that associated with the, the uh, font size, you have the line height. And for that, if you, in this case, I'm just using this one and this one, if you remove the, the second option of the array, now you don't need to, use the important uh, trick in there because it worked. It, it stopped using that um, associated line weight well, eventually, hopefully. Let me see if I can show it. Right, it's stuck in there. But at least from the responsive part, you can see that it doesn't have the important and it shows in there. The last whoopsie that I want to show you is regarding the background gradient. So imagine here 
you have like um, a gradient that I want to I want to from uh, purple, for example, to oh, shoot purple five hundred, and I want to be too transparent, and I want to be gradient. Where is that one? Gradient to bottom, whatever. So as you can see here, so I'm just losing up that loose. As you can see here, I have a perfectly good gradient here from purple to transparent. So it goes back from the color on the background. But if you open on, on Chrome, you can see that it's good. But actually, if you open on Safari, it's a little bit different. That's because telling, uh, not telling Safari by default, every transparent goes not for from the white color, but from the black. And you can end up with stuff like this and it could get your size all, all weird. And this happens on Safari on desktop or mobile. To fix this is quite simple, actually. You just need to, on your configuration, on your extension of colors, you just add the normal transparent, not like that, transparent. And normally the default version is just, I'm just going to type, copy paste it, I don't care. So it's just transparent. That's why the issue. If to solve this, you just need to add the RGBA and I'm just going to be showing you that this is actually what the thing that it's happening. So as you can see here, it on Chrome works normally and it maintains it on Safari because this is actually what Safari does uh, with transparency. But to fix that, you just need to, instead of using the RGB properties of zero, just switch it for 255, that's white. And as you can see, it solved it right away. So you can not having any whatsoever issues using some transparency on Safari on desktop or mobile. And that's it. That's the full tricks that I have for you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thanks for this. Thanks for having, sorry, something. Ian. I'm coming. <laughs> Beat me up, Scotty. Great job. You got stuff falling on you. You got code acting up. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm still, this thing is still falling on me, but uh, I will crank that thing out after. Oh, shoot. It's, it's falling apart once again. All so right. it's all live. No worry. All right. Great job. Right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. See you in a bit in the after party. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.